Praise God. Welcome. I believe you're excited to be here and I believe the word of God is transforming your life. We have been going on a subject that we have been dealing with of economic dominance or dominion when it comes to kingdom economics. And we have touched on different topics and we want to specialize on the first segment that I will be talking and um, clarifying on the subject of tithes. I want you to just look at somebody and say, we will be talking on the subject of tithes. One of the things that you would realize in this world we are living, there are many principles that God has established and some of the principles have been followed and some of the principles have been fought. One of the principles that many people have tried by all means to sabotage is the principle of tithe. There are many controversies that have come, that has been spoken on the subject of tithe to an extent that certain people and many people do not know anymore what is tithe, do not know the principles. What is it that God was establishing? What, what was the purpose of tithe when God established it? There are many doctrines that have come. But it is important for you to get to a place where you study the word of God. As the Bible declares, Paul speaking to Timothy, he told him, study to show yourself approved, a, good, a, a workman who is worthy of his work. So as we study the word, we want to get to understand through scripture, what is it that God meant? What was the purpose? And we are going to start um, basically on looking at what tithe is. Tithe is always known as the tenth. Tithe is known as the tenth, one tenth of everything. And the first person who we really see who was spoken to about tithe would look as you look at our Bible. I want you to open your Bible. I want you to open your Bible to the book of Genesis. I want you to open your Bible to the book of Genesis. Look at your neighbor and say, open your Bible to the book of Genesis. We realize that the aspect or the issue of tithe has been one of the most controversial things. But let's see where the issue started the aspect of tithe. In the book of Genesis, chapter number one, the Bible tells us about Abraham. The Bible says, and after Abraham returned from the defeat, uh, slaughter of the Chadelimo, all right, of the Chedoloma, the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him and the, and the valley of Shaveh, and that is the king's valley. All right. Melchizedek, the king of Salem, ancient Jerusalem, brought out bread and wine for them. And he was the priest of the Most High. Praise God. And Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, Blessed, joyful, favored be Abraham by God, most high creator of the universe, heaven and earth. The Bible says, And he blessed and praised and glorified the most high who has given, who has given your enemies into your hands. And Abraham gave that tenth of all the treasure he had taken in battle. And Abraham gave all the treasures he had taken in battle. One of the things that uh, you 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 uh, really realize on this scripture, this is one of the scriptures where we see the first giving being given. And when they gave, they followed the protocols of tithing. When Abraham gave, he followed the protocol of tithing. And this tithe that Abraham gave was one of the fundamental tithings that has ever been done. The Bible says that Abraham went to war and it was after he was coming from battle that he gave his tithe. He gave all the treasures that he had. The tithing that Abraham did did not just end in his generation. 
When you read your Bible, you realize that the very same tithing went forward to an extent that it reaches in the book of Hebrews, where the Bible tells us that even Levi gave tithe to Melchizedek while he was still in the loins of Abraham. Meaning that tithe has a way of establishing generational security of wealth. Tithe has a way of bringing in a generational assurance of prosperity. When you look into the world we live in, people are t- people tithe every day. I'm not talking about the house of God. I'm talking about two systems. I'm talking about two nations. Everything that people buy in different nations, they pay tax. They pay a tenth of whatever amount that they are buying or that they are using to buy whatever they are buying, which is tight. It's a system that was borrowed. To an extent, you would see that if a person does not pay their tax, there is a time when the revenue authority who gather every paper that speaks about your assets, the expenses you've made, the profits you've made, and they will come for you. Some people's assets have been taken. Why? Because they were not paying their ta- their taxes. So it is the same. What gives men security over their finances? Because that is what many people want to understand. You realize that in most cases, when we speak just in, 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 in natural sense, Many people, this is the biggest limitation they ever have because they try to gather money. They try to gather wealth. But the reason why there is no security is because in all the gathering of wealth, the the, the principle of tithe is substituted. And we are going to see earlier, uh, later on as we speak, looking at this subject, we are going to see what is it that God said that we should tithe. And what is the reason that we should tithe? But we want to see on the establishment, why was tithe established? All right. I want you to look at your neighbor and ask them, why was tithe established? It is important. Before you, you know, you practice the principle, you have to understand the reason it was established. You have to know why you are doing it. Because anything you do without proper knowledge will not give you the results that you you, you should have. You are not guaranteed of results because if you do not have enough knowledge, you will not be able to properly apply the principle. All right, so I want you to take your Bible, rush with your Bible right now to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus, um, Leviticus chapter number 27, verse 30. What does the Bible say? Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. The Bible says, And all the tithe, tenth part of the land, whether the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's and it is holy. Look at anybody and say, it is the Lord's and it is holy. What the Bible is telling us that everything that you will own, the tenth of everything you own belongs to God. And somebody who try really, you know, to to get to a place where they will say, but how is it that it becomes the Lord that it belongs to me? Do you want security? In every kingdom, there are laws or there are rules that are to be followed in every constitution. And this is one of the principles that God, you know, established. Now, the Bible says, if a man wishes to redeem any part of his tithe, he shall add one-fifth to it. Am Am I communicating to somebody? If any man wishes to redeem any part of his tithe, the Bible says you shall add another one-fifth. So you you would realize that these are principles that God established in order to put order. Verse number 32, the Bible says, For every tithe of the head of the flock where the passes under the shepherd's staff, tenth one, shall be holy to the Lord. 
So the Lord, the Lord is, you know, establishing and telling us the principle of tithing. And this is why it was established for men to get to a place where they tap into the common wealth of God. There is nothing you'd realize that will just happen or there is no system that will just reward you. There has to be an exchange. So every tenth, every tenth, the Bible says of the land and of what is on the land that you own, every tenth, as you take your stock, as you calculate, every tenth belongs to the Lord. All right. Are you being blessed? Let's look at what the Bible says in the book of Numbers chapter number 18, verse 21. Numbers chapter number 18, verse number 21. Praise God. Praise God. The Bible says, But I have given the Levites all the tithes in Israel as an inheritance in return to their service which they perform the service of the tent meeting of the tabernacle. The Israelites shall never again approach the tents of the meeting in the covered sanctuary of the holy place and the holy of holies and um, the Lord who is holy. So, you know, the, the Bible is telling us that one of the reasons why the Lord established the aspect of tithe was so that it can be an inheritance to the Levites. Those men who were working or those men who were uh, functioning in the function of priesthood, God gave them the responsibility that they operate in this zone to be the ones to receive tithe and to be the ones to work on, on the tithe. There are many functions that tithe was um, established for for God, but the first function was for the Levites. Who are the Levites? Those that were operating or those that were functioning as priests in the temple. These men, these men, because they spent much of their time serving God, they, 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 they could not go to the fields like everybody else. I believe there is a, there is a rule in the Bible a principle where they were told you a law do that what they were told you shall not own any piece of land so they had to spend much of their time in the temple they had to spend much of their time in the temple serving god they had to spend much of their time in the temple getting to a place not only where they're serving god but they're spending much of their temple serving people so god says as an inheritance and for them also to be able to survive because obviously they were married. It is something that has to be spoken plainly and not be hidden. For them to be able to survive and also to serve, God says, I'll give you as an inheritance. So the neglecting the principle of tithing is not only it's 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 not only a you know a way you sabotage the work of God to move, but it's a way also to disregard those that are serving. It might be they've been a blessing to you. It might be that they they, 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 they have responsibilities they have to cover so that they don't stress on those responsibilities. So that was one of the first things that the Bible establishes the aspect of tithing. The priests and the Levites, the priests and the Levites. Praise God. I want you to look at it by saying the priests and the Levites. Praise God. So tithe was established on the Levites. That was the first thing, on the Levites, so that they can be able to push the work of God and they can be able to serve God without stress, without grumbling, and without murmuring. I, 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 there is somebody there is somebody whom I was answering uh, because they, they 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 said a certain comment to say why can't men of God go to work and uh, they, they when they work they'll come to minister to us and I responded very plainly if 
the ministry is not taking much of their time. They can wait. But be assured that if you are to look for them and they become busy, do not grumble because they will be busy doing the very same thing you'll be doing. So they will not have time to, to, to pray as they should. They will not have time to study as they should. They will not have time to, to minister as they should. And in this, I'm not saying that ministers must be 100% dependent on the tithes, must be 100% dependent on what people give them. They have to find a way, especially in our times, to push uh, in covering their own responsibilities. But also, as I balance it, the reason why you get to a place where you tithe is you are also showing appreciation of the work that they will be doing in your life. So there has to be a balance. And I disregard anyone who will use this principle as a manipulation. Am I communicating to somebody? Let us take our Bibles to the book of Numbers, chapter number 18, verse 26. Numbers 18, verse 26. Praise God. The second thing, why tithe? Why tithe? The Bible says, Moreover, you shall speak to the Levites, and you shall say to them, When you take from the Israelites the tithes which I have given to you, from them as your inheritance, then you shall present an offering from it to the Lord. Tithe of the tithes paid by the people. So God is saying to the Levites, even after people have paid tithes, you have to take the tithes of tithes on that tithe. Oh, you have to take the tithe of tithes on the tithe and present it to the Lord as your offering. So even the one who's being tithed to has got also to tithe. So it is, in, it is also in the laws and the principles of God, his economy, that even if you are a Levite, after after tithe has been brought to the house of God, whether it's a ministry or whether it's individual, you have to take a tenth of that tenth and give it to the Lord. It means it, 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 the, now that is when now we are operating in a principle number one, you are giving it to someone who's your superior or number two, that is what will be also used to cater off certain responsibilities that are when strangers come amidst in the house of God, that is what is used to, you know, to feed them, to cater for them, and also certain people that are in the house of God that needs help, all right? So it is it, it comes from the tithe of tithes. Praise God. Praise God. Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? So also, so that is what one has to, to, to understand that when you are a priest, in as much as uh, uh, men will come and offer their tithes, you are also required to tithe the tithe of tithes. You are also required to tithe the tithe of tithes. It is a requirement from the Lord that as a priest, you have to also adhere. You also have to connect to that very same God who people are connecting to for blessings because you are also human. Before you were a priest, you are also a believer. Am I communicating to somebody? I want you to look at somebody and say the principles of God are brought to us so that order can be saved. Let us go to the book of Deuteronomy. I want you to take your Bible to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter number 14, verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter number 14 or Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22. Praise God. Deuteronomy. The Bible says, Every year you shall certainly tithe a tenth. That is the third thing. The third reason why tithe was established. Every year you shall certainly tithe a tenth 
of all the yield of the seed of your seed which is produced on the ground so now there is tithe of yearly before we go back to abraham there is tithe of yearly that men are required to bring to the house of the lord that every year all right to some it will be every month all right so to, to the youth so the bible says you shall eat the tithe tenth of the grain the new wine and your oil and the firstborn of your head and of your flock before the Lord and your God in the place where he chooses to establish his name presence so that you may learn to fear and worship the Lord your God and all with all filled with reference and respect. If the place where the Lord your God chooses to set his name presence is a great distance from you, you and you are not able to carry your tithe because of your tithe, your God be blessed with such. Mm. So if it is far, then you shall exchange your tithe for money and you shall, you shall take the money in your hand and go to the place of worship, which is of the Lord. Which is of the Lord. So the, the Bible is telling us principles. The third thing, the third reason why tithe was established is when God establishes a place, whenever God establishes a place, the Bible is saying that you get, when you arrive in a place where there is the presence of God, that God has established a place, or it might be a place of worship, you have to get to a place where you tithe in there, in that place. Now, what I'm explaining is the aspect of establishment of the presence of God. Establishment of the presence of God. When you get to be in an environment where the presence of God is saturated, in these times, they would take out tithe in reverence to God and in fear to God. That is why when you go on further in the Bible, you would realize that even the apostles got to a place where they, where, where they told people, to gather with their wealth and they started sharing the wealth in one place. It was also part of a, a, a system of time. So every place which God established his presence, he established his name. In these places, there are sanctuaries or places of worship. People would go there and they would give what they would give in fear and in reverence of the Lord. So the third principle is to show reverence to the Lord as a spiritual principle that men would do, or when men do this in showing reverence to God, they would establish a certain relationship with God as the same way you establish a certain relationship with the revenue authority. If you want to be on their good side, you have you would have to get to a place where your books are in order. Praise God. Praise God. When you go to Malachi, one of the most uh, famous scriptures, when people talk about tithe, we will really deal with it uh, on our next session. The Bible says, bring all the tithe, bring all the tithe, the tenth into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you so great a blessing until there is no more room to receive it. So the fourth reason why God established tithe was for men to get to a place where they connect to God's um, commonwealth. The Bible says, bring all the tithes to the house of God and see if I will not open you the windows of heaven. This is God speaking to believers to say, once you operate or apply this principle, there is a reverse in what I'm going to do. I'm going to open the windows of of heaven. So God is saying, I'm going to give you access to a dimension that is called the windows of heaven. When I give you access to this dimension, the Bible says, I'll pour out a blessing. You shall not have room 
to carry it. So the blessing is already available, but the activation key is the tithe. The blessing, if, if you read that scripture, you are seeing the sequence, the blessing is available, but the activation key is the tithe. So when reading this scripture, I get an understanding that in as much as I've, I've kept on repeated repeatedly explaining to us that when it comes to the kingdom of God, there is exchange in the spirit. I believe reading this scripture, someone has gotten the understanding that there is exchange. The blessing is already available, but God is saying, in as much as my blessing is already available, I want you to get to a place where you exchange with me, exchange what you have with what, I, 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 what, with what I will give you. So I'll pour out a blessing that you will not be able to receive. So we see from where we read from the beginning, we, we touched on Abraham when Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek. And I explained to us a principle that the Bible, the Bible tells us that Abraham, after he gave tithe to Melchizedek, the Bible tells us, when you read your Bible in the book of Hebrews, I want you to take your Bible to the book of Hebrews. Take your Bible to the book of Hebrews. Praise God. Praise God. All right, Hebrews chapter number seven. Hebrews chapter number seven. Hebrews chapter number seven, from verse number eight. I want you to see what Abraham did and the, the, the impact of it even to generations, spiritually. What Abraham did and the impact of what he did even to generations. Furthermore, here in the Levitical priesthood, tithes are received by men who are subject to death. But in the case concerning Melchizedek, they are received by one whom it is testified that he lives on perpetually. That is Christ. A person might even say that Levi, the father of all of, of the priestly tribes, himself, who received tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, the father of all Israel and all who believe. Look at verse number 10. For Levi was still in the loins and born of his forefather Abraham when Melchizedek met Abraham. Now, what will surprise you on this scripture is the aspect of Levi giving tithe before he was born. Meaning the tithe that Abraham gave was not a common tithe. That tithe, because the Bible says he gave everything he had gotten from the raid. So it, it is like <laughs> whatever business he had gone to do, when he gave that tithe, he, he banged even to, you know, to, to, to generations that I believe those even that could not even pay tithe. I believe that was a very huge... Um, are uh, some of, of treasures that the Bible says he gave them all. But I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this. That is why you see that in the worldly system, uh, I have taught us many times that when you are doing business, um, take 40% and give it to, to, to the tax. 40% take it back to the business, all right, and live on the 20%. The reason why you are taking the 40% is so that their revenue authority might have more. They owe you more. You know, they pay back and even sometimes they pay with interest. So when they owe you more, you are at a greater advantage than when you owe them. Than when you owe them. So I believe that is what Abraham did. When Abraham took that whole treasure. And the Bible is telling us on the scripture that we read that even 
Levi, when he was still in the loins of Abraham, he gave tithe. He gave tithe. Abraham and Abraham and Levi never saw each other. Abraham was already dead, but he was still in the loins. Abraham gave birth to Isaac. Isaac gave birth to Jacob. Jacob gave birth to Levi. But the connection through the loins is one of the things that I believe prayerfully. I want you to pray for God to open your eyes and for God to reveal to you. Such systems cannot just be established in vain. That is why the Bible says, for spiritual things are foolishness to those that do not believe. These are principles that God has established in our times. These are principles that God established, has established for us to be able to prosper with. Time. I will not debate much further as many people debate. This is a, a law that continuously operates and continuously lives. In our second segment, we are going to really go deep on, on, on dealing with certain debates and questions. And I believe as you are listening to this message, write in your question right on the comment section. And those are the things I'm going to be dealing with on our next session as we go on economic dominion that you may understand more. What is it that God established what is your inheritance in faith and what is your inheritance in prosperity. May God bless you. May God be with you. I pray that may the Lord hear your prayer. I decree and I declare that understanding may fill you. You will not be ignorant of the word of God. You will not be ignorant of the principles of God. I pray that the very same principle we have taught today, may you get more revelation, may you get understanding, and may generations be prospered because of you. God bless you. God be with you. In Jesus' mighty name, I love you. God bless you. Tell somebody, God is blessing me a thousand times more. In Jesus' mighty name. You are blessed.